in my life, when I've met people who've had problems with their kids, I tell them, I go, I don't know how to do this, but get them to church. You're either following their friends, they're either following their friends, or they're following God. And that's where you want to put them on that path. And so that's where it's worthwhile because that's modern day apostles. That's yeah. what I say. This is modern day apostles. Yeah. You talk about discipleship, you need to, you know, we that's how you do it. You go yeah. out to the children. Yeah. And hopefully they'll teach their children. Marcus Aurelius said, what we do in life echoes through eternity. What is your life echoing through eternity? Welcome to Echoes Through Eternity with Dr. Jeffrey Skinner. Our mission is to inspire, engage, and encourage leaders from across the globe to plant missional churches and be servant leaders. So join us and hear the stories of servant leaders reverberating lives as God echoes them through eternity. Brought to you by Missional Church Planting and Leadership Development in Dynamic Church Planting International. Welcome into Echoes Through Eternity, Season 3. I am your host, Dr. Jeffrey D. Skinner, and I am joined in the studio today by two incredibly, I think they're, they're probably the busiest ladies on the planet, but they are two great ladies that, that just happened to run into our paths crossed, I think around Christmas time of last year at a Youth for Christ Christmas dinner. My wife is a, is a teacher. She volunteers. She is the I don't know, the, the sponsored teacher or something for the club at her school. And so all I know is she has to be there at like 7 a.m. on the fur on like the third Wednesday of the month to for a bunch of kids to get in her room. And she even did it online through COVID. And and so she's committed to that. Chrissy, one of the owners of Sourced, which is the company that these two ladies work for, they are a back office services company. Anyway, she was there. It was her home, lovely home, just a, a fantastic host. She and I got to talking and discovered that that not only did we have a mutual love for the Lord, but we had a mutual love for foster kids and, and for children in general. Both of my children are adopted out of foster care. We just happened to get our daughter when she was th- two days old. My son was three and a half years old when we got him. He was a Hurricane Katrina refugee. Maybe one day I'll interview him, but he doesn't remember anything about it. But (laughs) and right now he probably he he might be an interesting guest since I'm a pastor, but I might be a little bit afraid of what he'd say. But but uh, (laughs) (laughs) but anyway, that's enough about that. But just two wonderful ladies here: Gabrielle Mills, Chrissy Strohmeyer of Source. Like I said, they're a back office services company. Their website is Get Sourced dot com and right. so you can go there and and read about hear about all their services they've got a history there their story but today we have them in the studio and so you don't have to go to their website right now you can just listen to them tell it and so welcome in ladies it is so fantastic to have you here thank you for making time thank you for having us thank you and, and full disclosure they i do use them for marketing i have a, a a missional leadership coaching, a nonprofit company that our organization that I run. I utilize them for my marketing, hired them a couple of months ago. They're doing a fantastic job. Jason and Maureen are two of their folks that help part of the team there that help me out do fantastic work, but I still pay them. We're not trading anything for this and they not, they're not, I'm not getting any benefit from, from saying nice things about them in any way. Uh, <laughs> <paying> us, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just want everybody to know, yes, they are my, they, I am their customer. No, I, I have no benefit other than just, you know, maybe an extra jewel in my crown when I get to heaven one day. The, for saying nice things about these ladies. What I say comes from the heart, and I truly believe everything that I say about them. But but please, if you, if you are a business owner, I encourage you to check out their website. They do fantastic work. So welcome in, ladies. It is so good to have you. I'm finally going to shut up and let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want to know, my friend? Yeah. So, so tell us, I, lo- I said a little bit about Source, but, but you are your, your best uh, ambassadors for your brand. So talk a little bit about what you do and then we'll get to, to, you know, how it grew out of that. And then we'll talk about how you use that for the Lord, because one of the things that I like to do and, and really focusing on this season 
is echoing the voices of people like yourselves who are in the marketplace or in the workforce, but they don't necessarily walk around with their Bible in their hands saying, hey guys, let's go there in the break room at nine o'clock in the morning to do a devotion. They don't, Jesus, a scripture or Jesus, you know, except maybe saying, Jesus, I can't believe I'm so busy. It may not necessarily. (laughs) (laughs) It, It may not leave our mouths in a way that it should sometimes, but but we know that we're being a witness for, for him in the workplace there. And, and everybody that I'm interviewing so far this season is about that. They're, they're not professional clergy. God has called us out. God has, has says, go. And we, we read that great commission, go into all the world and make disciples. We read that as go into all the world. Like we're doing, you know, go to Africa or go to India and we're going to, you know, go to the other side of town or, on the wrong side of tracks. We're going to go somewhere else to preach the gospel, to make disciples. When we look at that real translation, though, it's more like as you go, as you're living your life. So as you are doing what I have gifted you to do. So if that's to be an accountant, as you're an accountant, live your life. Be a make disciples. Be a you know preach the gospel. As you're a carpenter, as you do your hammer your nails, as you build your houses, uh, as you build factories, as you do these things, preach the gospel, make disciples. Right, that's what it's about. So that's the focus of this season. So those are kind of the three areas I want to talk about: is your your call, how you know how God caught, got you into this area here, how you use that to be a blessing to others and in, in your gifts, and be a witness for the Lord. And then the story, and then uh, talk about what your company does. And then Chrissy, you do a ton of volunteer work, like I said, with Youth for Christ, as well as the community, community Connections children. Home. Connections homes. Connections home. Connections yes. homes. I, I wrote it down and then I turned the page on my notepad here. And so a lot of good that did. But anyway, so talk about those four things there. So anyway, Gabrielle, talk a little bit about, about Source. What all you guys I, I can certainly do that, Jeff. So Source is a back office services company, and we serve entrepreneurs and business leaders in the small to mid-market segment. And what we've learned, so I guess it really starts with our story of, of how we started Sourced and how we came up with the idea of what we do. We have five services within our business. Um, accounting, HR, talent acquisition, administrative support, and marketing. All of those things are within the back office, which is why we say we do back office professional services, right? But when Chrissy and I set out to start this business, that is so not what we thought we were going to end up doing. Really what, what happened was, is that God spoke to me and he said, Gabrielle, I want you to be an entrepreneur. I want you to start a business. And I just thought that was super groovy. And I called her and I was like, oh, by the way, Chrissy is my mom. (laughs) I don't think we've said that yet. So I am Chrissy's daughter. She's my mama. So after this moment where God spoke to me, I obviously called my mom and I was like, guess what happened? And it was really cool. And she was like, hey, so what kind of business are you thinking about doing? And I said, well, he didn't tell me that. (laughs) He didn't, he didn't really get go there. But we kind of decided in that conversation that we wanted to do it together and that that was that was always her dream and it has recently became my dream as of that time and so we decided to become business partners and we looked at all sorts of different franchises we knew we wanted to be b2b we knew we wanted to have a team of people and be the reason to create jobs and put bread on people's tables i was a a product of the recession the earlier recession not the one we're in now (laughs) Um, And so we wanted to be a little bit of recession resistant and we wanted to have a fun business and we wanted to have recurring revenue. So that was important too, but we wanted it to be really fun. And so we went on this multi-year journey trying to figure out from a franchise perspective, what that would be. And we just didn't, we didn't find it anywhere. We got close on a couple, but they just, it wasn't for us. Right. And God was just, every time we got close, he just kind of closed the door and we're very frustrated at times, but you know, he always knows what he's doing. And so it got to be that uh, we were at this crossroads of like, okay, so we're no longer going to do the franchise thing anymore. We have this money that we were going to give to a franchisor to buy the model. So we still have that. Do we want to just say that that was a really cool experience that mothers and daughters don't ever get to do together? And that's just a fun story and we'd be grateful for it. 
Or do we want to roll the dice and say, all right, we have this money. Why don't we just invest it in ourselves doing something and see if we can make something of it? So we threw caution to the wind and we did. But in doing that, we also looked at each other and we're like, so what do you want to do? <laughs> and we were like, oh. <laughs> so our big idea, because we were so smart at the time, I say facetiously, was we went around to as many business owners that would let us in the building and Google. And we tried to figure out where businesses were underserved and how we could help them. And if people were wanted to do it all over again, what would they do? And we put all their thoughts up on a whiteboard and back office services kind of came out of that. Now we weren't smart enough at the time to realize that's what we were looking at. We just kind of meshed together a bunch of services and just started going. Granted, we did take six months to build the business first. We had people that wanted our support. So we didn't open for another six months after we came up with the concept, but we didn't know it was back office, quote unquote, back office related until probably year number yes. three or four. <laughs> I don't think we were the brightest crayons in the box, but we just keep on going. And so that's really the story of Sourced. And now we are very blessed to be able to provide these business services to really the best people in the world. The entrepreneurs that are doing the hustle and grind every single day, they're trying to make a living for their families. They're trying to to live a dream for themselves. They're trying to have the American dream. They're, I mean, they're just the salt of the earth people and in the best way. And those people need help and they need support and they can't do their, they can't make their dream a reality on their own. It, you just can't, you need people and running a business, as you know, Jeff is really hard to do. And we want to make that a little easier for people. So that's why we do the services that we do. And that's why we have all of those different services under one roof. A lot of people thought we were absolutely crazy for having them all, but we said, no, like there could be a, a business leader who needs just HR support, but there also could be one that wants talent acquisition and accounting. That's so random, but you can find it in the same place with us. So we're really there to help businesses succeed, help people grow, help them not only create opportunities for themselves, but create opportunities within our own doors, right? That's that's why we get up out of bed in the morning. And that's that's kind of our story of how we started. And having the fractional services are nice. So when businesses are a little smaller, that they can use fractional services. They're no, they don't need every position to be full time. And so we can provide better pricing on a fractional level. And as they grow, and we've seen businesses over the years grow to where it's like, now I need talent acquisition, which usually does full-time roles for people. So we've got everything, again, under one roof to help somebody to grow. So it's been a thrill to see clients over the years, like build up because we've been able to support them on the journey. And that's, I mean, that's just such a thrill. It, it is. It, it, it's sad losing them as a monthly client, but it's great to say fly little bird. Like, yeah. <laughs> we'll get you someone great. We'll help train them. And then they've got their team of people. But at the same time, that's not always what happens. Sometimes very more mid-market clients will come to us and they'll say, you know, I've got I've got two and three roles that we need to hire for. And we say, you really don't. You can right. outsource it for less. We did that just today. We, yeah, just today. So we end up helping their bottom line significantly yeah. when they outsource uh, parts of or their whole departments even. So we serve the smallest of the small, really, once they're ready to delegate. You know, there's, right. there's some things you got to go through. But the larger clients really find value in us too because we help save them money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cheaper to hire you. What I found is cheaper to hire you guys than it is to hire an employee. And, and for me, yeah. it was... You know, I'm using all these various places out there to try and, you know, create my images for my marketing. And I'm trying to come up with the marketing myself. And then I've got this other company this, that, I, that provides employees that will do this. And so the attraction for me was, like you said, everything under one roof. And I have the capacity to grow with you guys. So as my needs increase, you guys can do more than just marketing for me. You can yeah. do the, the the background, the the back office of accounting and things like that as well. Absolutely. And uh, and then of course nonprofits are unique in and of themselves because they're not existing for profit. They're existing more for ministry type purposes there. 
So I have certainly found it useful and can second everything that you said there. Love the story. And, and how often is it that mom and daughter get to work together? For us, so. <laughs> although we're in back-to-back offices, and there are days that I don't get to see every other day <laughs> of online calls. But, you know, overall, we're a company who likes to serve people. Like mm-hmm. everybody in our organization, in fact, Gabrielle and I onboard everybody who comes into our organization. We're on that first call, so they know who we are. And it's 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 really amusing when we talk with them. And they're all over the country, too. But we say somewhere in your interview, you said, I like to help people. And so, and and you'll see their eyes light up and them going, yes. And I'm like, that's why we hired you. You know, obviously for the expertise too, but we hire people who like to serve others. And that's the secret sauce for us because it's about serving. It's not about the money. The money everybody needs. You got to be able to pay your bills. It's a service organization, and and that's we, we say that on our value. There's no higher purpose than that for us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and one theme, and it's funny because I heard this, and I, I um, I told the last guest that I interviewed the same thing. I can't remember where I heard it, so we'll just give God the the credit, right? Because uh, yes. He created all things anyway, even our brains. Therefore, He He you know tangentially gets credit for anything that we do or say. I'm being funny. The I don't know who said it, but essentially it was show me someone whose purpose they think is, you know for their organization is simply to make money, and no matter how much money they have, I will show you someone who's miserable. Yes. Show me someone whose purpose is to serve others, but simultaneously happens to make a little money while serving them. I'll show you someone who's thriving in life and extremely Absolutely. happy with their life. Absolutely. And and you know we can point to millionaires and billionaires across the man- landscape out there who got all kinds of money, and and you know ultimately they end up becoming philanthropists or something in order to find their purpose otherwise they kill themselves and that's sad to say but they they just end, they're just so miserable and you're thinking how can you be miserable with that much money and the answer is because money's not what you make you happy money may facilitate you making others happy and that will make you happy because you're doing what God has caused you to do. And that is to make a difference in other people's lives. You're making disciples. You're serving others. Jesus had all the power in the world. He was God incarnate. But the Bible tells us he came to serve. And and I think that is, that's, you know, the message I want to get across this, this season and echoes through eternity is, look, you know, no, at no time in my life has there ever been a greater mission field, especially within the United States, for Christians to be servants, as opposed to, you can still be a leader, there's servant leadership, but seek to serve first. And that's what I like about Swords. That's what I like about your company. And Chrissy, that brings us back to, you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. You serve on all kinds of boards. You serve, I mentioned Youth for Christ, you're on their board. You serve on the with the foster care people, that community, uh, community connections, children. Connections homes. Yes. Connections homes. Man, I can't get that. I don't know why I'm having a mental block on that. Okay, Connections Home station that it does serve foster kids is where my heart is, and it yeah, has for a very very long time. But Connections Home helps. You know, as foster kids age out of foster care, where do they go? What do they do? Who's who? You find so many of them um, going to jail or getting pregnant, and those kids are into foster care. Connections Homes really stops that in its tracks and it we have is proven it over the years I think we've been in business and a founding board member for eight or nine years now i don't remember how many but we provide mentoring families for those youth who are aging out of foster care or who are homeless let's say somebody goes in their church and they connect they they contact connection homes and says here's this youth who has nobody else so where do they go how do they know how to sign a lease how do they know how to buy a car we actually connect them with people who are right for them. They get to pick it. So if somebody wants to be a doctor, we connect. We try to connect them with people in the medical field who can mentor and shepherd them. And the success rate is crazy. I won't share all of that with you. But I tell you what, it really lifts up young adults because they're not kids anymore. Mm-hmm. And I was a foster parent for over 10 years. But it actually takes them for, they, the commitment is forever. Like the 
the mentoring families sign up forever to be in this youth life. And the things that happen in that organization are amazing. We started in Georgia. We've, we have it in Georgia, in Texas, and it just coming on board in Tennessee. So there's a lot of foster kids out there who need somebody. Everybody used to say, and I got into fostering, like literally becoming a foster parent because an 18 year old, you know, people would say they should know. And I'm like, how do they know if they were never taught? And so this actually provides that basis for them to know and have somebody to call on for support. And it, it's actually, it, speaking on that, that part about how do they know if they were never taught? Yeah. Chrissy has kind of broken that down for me over the years of like, what is, what does this insurance deductible mean? Like, how do you change a tire or wh- what, what happens with, with my savings? So yeah. like, if I, if I, what, what bills do I pay first? You know? So it's, it's a lot of things that you don't ever really think about. Like what, what's an interest rate, you know, like these yeah. things are never taught in school. They should be, but I just, when she would break that down for me right in the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. I always would go to my parents to be like, how do I file these taxes? Right. <laughs> What's right. HG block? What? That That's somewhere for them to go because, and I don't think people really realize that because we're all busy doing our own lives, yeah. but someone had to tell us. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Even in our own, own organization, we have that same type of um, desire to, when somebody makes a mistake, you were talk- talking about that, is that we find out, do they know? Are they aware? Do we need to retrain? Do we need to, what? it's not a personal thing. It's a, it's right. really a, hey, let's find out where your knowledge base is. Yeah. So then we can, you know, help you out with that. And it's, and it, so it's never personal. It's, it's business, but it's also human to say, you know what? Maybe you don't know. Let's think about first. That's the first thing we always do. Do you know? And so I think that that's just, really important. But the organization was started by Pam Parrish um, out of Victory World Church. She had a she had a thought of doing this. And when I met her and she asked me to be on board, I was like, absolutely. This is why I care. And it's, um, it's been a, a thrill to watch them grow and just grow and, and to really now go out to other states. And this is, we're going to continue to grow because there's more and more use that just needs needs somebody and these are people who may have a, a parent still but their parents are addicts or they're, they're not there for them but now they have true parents and um, i have one of my daughters who is officially being adopted next month but she's been with me since she was 13 14 years old she was my first foster daughter and i'm really her connection so she has a mother and her mother's an addict and doesn't really connect with her but I've been in her life and walking that journey with her for mm. 11, 12 years. Wow. And she sees me as her mother. She calls me her mother. She tells me her mother on her mother. Right. And so that's, and the girl is a superstar. Like I can talk all day about her. She's a superstar. And, and she got it because somebody breathed into her, breathed life into her. She was an F student on the street with nobody in her life. And now all of a sudden, like she's the top salesperson and she sells insurance, which is huh. really hard to do. And she, last month she didn't, she wasn't the top person and she was really upset about it. <laughs> she was the top person. But she has kind of learned and her husband, she's married now with two children, has said she remembers every single lesson you taught her. Oh, every single lesson. That's great. So, it's, it's a really good story. And I'm finally glad to adopt her officially because we're kind of awkward. She's my first foster daughter. And, uh-huh. and so for me, that's where we made the connection at Youth for Christ. Yeah. We have two that you've adopted. This will be, she'll be my third that I've adopted. Wow. Adopted, so. How about that? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, the reason I wanted you guys on because you have, you, you're, you're exceeding your your call, I guess you could say. I mean, you're you're making a difference in so many different places. It's not just in the marketplace. I mean, you're busy as you can be just running the business, but you also take time and carve out time to serve on these boards and and pour into other people's lives. And I think that's a testament to us all and a reminder to us all that you know what we do what we want to do. We can be busy. That becomes a kind of an excuse to 
you know, well, I don't want to do this. I can just say I'm busy. And also wear, wear it sometimes as a badge of honor. You know, I'm busy. But I think stewarding our schedule is a better way to say it. And uh, you do a great job of stewarding your schedule. You know, you you still make time to serve in the community while simultaneously serving people through your business. And that's why I wanted you guys on. It's, it's just incredible there. And But the payoff, I mean, you're, the legacy that, that that you have when we're able to pour into people. And I need to connect you. You didn't mention Alabama. I need to connect you with the Big House Foundation. And that was started by the daughter of... Hayden, that's my youngest, the one that was two days old when we adopted her. She's now 16. Her siblings were adopted by another couple in Opelika, Alabama. Their daughter started Big House Foundation, which is a resource for adoptive parents. You guys, your people would be that at Connections Homes would be the le- next logical step for them to partner with there because there's all kinds of kids in Alabama. They Hayden had a brother who aged out of the foster care system because, and I won't go into the entire story, but it was some severe trauma, you know, not just physical and emotional, but beyond that, just trauma within their home. Fortunately, Hayden was never exposed to that. Unfortunately, her brothers and sisters were. Yeah. And her oldest brother, they, there's just some trouble in the home, was not able to, the foster parents that were planning, they ended up being the adoptive parents for her sisters were not able to adopt them and they end up aging out of foster care. Yeah. And I don't know that Alabama has an agency like Connections Homes. And so it'd be good to get, get you guys connected. So I will. One thing I like about the, the organization too is not everybody can be a foster parent. That's a, mm-hmm. that's a lot to ask. Yeah, of it is. And I've, I've seen her do it over, over the course of 10 years and easy. It is not. Yeah. Um, and what I, think is really cool about the connections home model is you don't have to you can have a calling but you don't have to take on quite as much yeah. as being a foster parent yeah you just have to be there you yeah. just have to be available they don't have to live with you they don't the, you don't have to become their right. like adoptive parent that's a lot <clears throat> but they you just need to be there for their heart and for their yeah. mind and it's a lot less not challenging but demanding of a yeah. role yeah. than the actual foster parent of a minor. Yeah, yeah. but but simultaneously don't underestimate the value of of simply, you know, not everybody can be, have their, let's use a body analogy, not everybody's going to be an entire body, right? Yeah. But yes. you can be a finger and you can be a yeah. hand. Uh, yeah. that, there are times where I need just a finger. <laughs> there are times when organizations like that just need that. And simultaneously you have young children of your own Foster children have been traumatized and, and, you know, not to put a label on anyone. My mom's a counselor. I fully understand trauma, but that, that comes with that. Unfortunately, is some baggage sometimes. And when you have young children of your own, you really have to think first about the safety of them. As much as you love and care for and have a heart for these foster kids, you cannot endanger your own children for that sake. So this gives you a a way to be involved without having to do that. Yeah. That's why I had to stop serving as a foster parent. Um, I had over 50 kids in my home, 55, 56 or so. Um, But I adopted the two young ones, you know, out of foster care and I did teams and I'm telling you the police, the ambulance, the fire department was at my house every other day. Yeah. There is a lot of trauma. There is, I took taking in girls. I'm telling you a hundred percent of them have been raped, you know, and, 13, 14 years old, 15 years old. What do you do with that? How do you unpack? It? And so that's why I had to stop fostering. But doubling back to the connections homes, you talk about a finger. There was one youth I remember specifically, and all he wanted was a cupcake with a candle for his birthday. There wasn't anybody to, to I mean, to, to remember it was his birthday and to call him and to say happy birthday. That was it. He could, if he could just have an adult who can remember his birthday every year, that's all he wanted. And and it goes a little bit further than that, but it, at a minimum, it has that. You know, you call your own children when they're it's their birthday and say happy birthday, and hopefully get them a, a cake or something. But yeah, that's such a small want, and it's or like come to Thanksgiving, yes, you know, or it's just a random call of like, hey, I had a bad day at work. I'd like to just vent, you know, as 
the people that did not grow up in foster care and aged out of foster care, these are things that don't even hit our radar because we grow up with communities that these kids and these now adults don't have. And so it's, I think what Pam started is absolutely amazing because it is more easily accessible for people to get involved in the foster care system. But I think it ends up being even more impactful. You, it has, a, has some challenges because you're dealing with people with trauma, but you remember more about your a, a, a young adult life and your adult life than you do about your childhood sometimes. And those lessons are sometimes more meaningful because it's things like what you have to do every year for insurance. Or how, do, how do you accept a job offer? Or like, you know, what is what does this light mean in my car? You know, yeah. so it's, remember these things, and it's it's just a really cool. Yeah, really cool uh, you're right. I mean, we take those soft skills, and we call them soft skills, but they're I mean, sometimes they're hard skills too. They, that we life skills. Yeah, mm-hmm. life skills. That's right. We need to we have to take that we take that for granted a lot of times. My own the son that I adopted, Blaine, who's 19 now at college. I remember when he first came to live with us, um, he walked in the door. And at the, at the time, we were living in, in uh, Auburn, Alabama. I was planting a church down there. And we had the really high ceilings. Uh, I have since learned that really high ceilings also mean really high electric bills. So I don't have high ceilings anymore. <laughs> but he walked in. We had those high ceilings. And he's like, wow, it's a castle. <laughs> and he all he had was a Mickey Mouse jacket. And a Walmart bag and a clothes on his back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that, that he was fascinated with, and it took us years to figure out what was going on, but every time somebody would come into the house, he'd want to know, are you going to take your shoes off? That was the first question he asked when someone would come into our house, are you going to take your shoes off? We're like, well, buddy, why does that matter if they take their shoes off? You know, and, and after they leave, he'd be like, who was that lady that had the, the, Shoes on with the yellow stripe and a purple spot. We're like, I, um, I, I wasn't watching her shoes, buddy. I, I'm not sure who you're talking about. And to this day, I, I told him jokingly, I said, son, I said, the expense for your college is going up because the college, the university contacted us and said, you need a separate room for your shoes. Uh, <laughs> he's fascinated with shoes to this day. We finally figured out that shoes represented for him who he could attach to. Who are you permanent in my life? Are you going to stick around? If you take your shoes off, I can attach to you because you're going to be a permanent part of my life. If you don't take your shoes off, I know I can't trust you. I can't attach to you. But so I need to know, are you going to take your shoes off? So I know how to act. And who to love. Really cool. And you think about, well, you need parents on the journey, but, you know, in doubling back to Christ, you need Christ on the journey. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that, and you know this, that Gabrielle and I, we always say our third partner is Christ, you know. We pray, when, you know, for thanks and we pray for when we need something, just like we would do with our own lives. But that's why you mentioned Youth for Christ. That's why that's the other organization that I serve. And when I'm a board member, I'm an active board member. They are going out into the schools. I didn't even know it was possible, but they are going out into the schools. As you know, you're, you're wiping a teacher. And I didn't know it was like they're, they are teaching Christ to middle school and high schoolers enter Atlanta. And it's like, that's, that's who you need for the journey. You need parents and you need Christ. And, you know, for the journey and it's getting, it's getting them to know Christ. And our executive director, Mike McAuliffe, he was a teen. He came to Youth for Christ and actually in Florida and Vero Beach, where I was from too. I've lived there. And he came just to play basketball. And now he's the executive director of Metro Atlanta Youth for Christ. And we're trying to get into all the different schools. And in my life, when I've met people who've had problems with their kids, I tell them, I go, I don't know how to do this, but get them to church. You're either following their friends, they're either following their friends, or they're following God. And that's where you want to put them on that path. And so that's where it's worthwhile because that's modern day apostles. That's yeah. right. This is modern day apostles. Yeah. You talk about discipleship. You need to, you know, we. that's how you do it. You go yeah. out to the children. Yeah. And hopefully they'll teach their children. 
That's exactly right. Yeah, in fact, I mean, that is that is the topic of uh, the book that I'm writing now. I was working on chapter six today, the final chapter, I hope. <laughs> this has been a labor of love, but it's mentor me, you know, and what you're talking about, what we've talked about, not just, I mean, yeah, in the workforce, you need mentors because I'm telling, I don't know what they're, I don't know what colleges are teaching graduates today, but they're not teaching them the skills they need to run a business uh, that you have to train that and in, in the workplace today, yes. my son, his degree, he kept, he's been saying since he is in ninth grade or 10th grade, he wanted to be an entrepreneur. Huh? That's great son. But you, you know, entrepreneur just means you own your own business. What's your own business. You got to think about what you're going to do, you know? And he's, I just want to own my own business. Well, again, that, that's great. So you got to learn some you. skills. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Hey, give me, give me, in other words, what you're saying, you will wake up at 6 a.m., you will be in the office at 6.30 a.m., and you will get home at midnight. And yeah. you will do that all over again the next day. That's what you're saying you want to do. Now, what is it that you love so much that you want to do that for that long That's every good. day for the next 40 years while you build that business? And then you pass that along That's to your good. kids, you know? Yeah. And And... But they are one of the things I love about his degree with entrepreneurship is the business degree, but they give them like he's in Nashville. So they get to work on the Super Bowl ads when the Super Bowl was in Nashville. They got to work on the ad agency with design that. So fun. What? Yeah. I mean, that's that's real world experience. Right. So so they graduate and it's not just that. I mean, it's music industry there. So they get to serve. They get to work in the music industry alongside some of these record label executives and people like that learning the ins and outs of the music industry if you want to be a music entrepreneur. So they get kind of a taste of everything, but they're learning hard skills and soft skills of leadership and and, and tenacity and things like that. But they're getting hard skills that they can take into the workforce with them. And and so we need those mentors at all levels. We need those in the workforce. We need those in the and they need to be godly leaders as well. And uh, you're talking and and we've got to go here. I know you guys have a lot going on, but but last funny story here. We're talking about foster care. I, one of my favorite conversations when we were doing foster care was the lady from the Department of Human Resources called us up and said, "Hey, Mr. Skinner, Reverend Skinner, we have this is after we'd already adopted our two kids. We have another." young lady that needs at least temporary home, you know, and said, we're trying to find somebody to adopt her. We've got several feeders out from existing home members, but we need somebody to keep her in the meantime. We're like, okay, well, that's fine. And she was, you know, she told the age and, and all that. I don't want to get too specific, but they uh, called up and said, well, the only thing is we need to know if you honor her religion. And I said, well, I said, um, you know, I'm a pastor and I'm a Christian. I said, I'm not going to like tire down and, and do an exorcism or, or anything like that. But certainly, you know, we'll be going to church every Sunday. It's going to be hard to grow up in my home and not hear the word Jesus Christ and, you know, pray and read your Bible. And, you know, the things that we do in Christianity that shape us, it's going to be hard to hide that from this young lady. And, and I said, so, so what religion is she? And he said, well, she's, she's Wiccan. I said, oh, I said, okay. Well, I said, no, I'm probably not going to you know, honor that. <laughs> well, we're not sure you can take her then. And okay. Yeah. So she said, well, I'll get with my boss. So, you know, a couple of days later, she called back. Well, I talked to my boss and they said, it's okay. If, if you don't honor her religion, I said, okay. But, but I said, no, when I say I'm not going to honor it, we're not going to, you know, kill chickens in my front yard either. Right. I said, we're not going to bark at the moon. We're not going to do that. Yes. <laughs> these things i'm not sure my hoa would allow me to have chickens in my front yard anyway but <laughs> so she she's like okay mr skinner we understand what you're saying but anyway we ended up taking that young lady in and 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 then one year she one one day she went to school and and this is back when swine flu was going around and so um that was before covid even happened but this was like the pandemic that we thought might have happened before and it never turned into anything. But at the time the schools were kind of panicking, this young lady went to school and told all of her teachers that she had been exposed to swine flu. (laughs) Fortunately, my wife worked next door to school next door. They knew her. So they called her and said, Hey, this, this girl has said she's exposed to swine flu. 
we've got her in quarantine in front office. You need to come get her. <clears throat> My wife's like, no, she has not been exposed to swine flu. You know, so and so just you know had a cold, but it was not swine flu, and and they go through that. Those are the challenges that you face in foster care. But but there's a lot of humor involved if you can you know look back as well. Uh, sourced COVID, um, Jeff. I had because I had teens, and you know I'm sitting in the front row in church with we're Catholic with two um, young, I guess they're teens who had no faith, and then one Muslim. And she came to church and she sat in church, you know, she didn't know, but she was just curious of what it's all about. And you never know what they're going to get. And it's really not ours to do. It's God's to do. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. bring them there and let God work. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Look, I, I say Christianity is, is, has to be caught before it's taught. And, you know, and that, that goes back to that being a, a faithful witness. And, and look, none of us are perfect. I, I don't mean to, you know, what I tell people more than anything, they want you to live your life authentically. Uh, yes. My granddaddy, he had a third grade education. He tried to teach me to hammer nails and cut boards and, and things like that. I still don't know how. I mean, I, he'd complain because mm-hmm. I, you know, hold the hammer too too tight. It just rear back hit, son. And <laughs> I'd rear back and miss. I, <laughs> but what I did catch. Yeah, we all have our gifts. <laughs> What I did catch was his faith, was his tenacity and his love for the Lord. I, he didn't teach me to kneel down every evening and pray like the like it all depended upon him, you know, and work like it all depended upon him. He'd get up at five. He didn't teach me to wake up at five a.m. and go to work and then come home and tend four gardens and then go and visit his parishioners in their homes and then wake back up and, and then come in and eat dinner and pray till time to go to bed and then start all over again the next day. He didn't teach me that, but I did catch that. So that's what you're talking about there. That's the more important thing to catch. Yeah. Hey, I'd ladies. How to follow the Lord than to, than to hammer a nail properly any day. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It is so good having y'all. And thank you for the work that you're doing for me and for serving the Lord, especially. Sourced is the name of their company. Get Sourced at their website. Go there, check them out. If you have a business, I promise you, it's some of the best money you'll invest. Uh, as to you know, because you're you're not just hiring, you know, one person. You're hiring the entire team, and you know there are times that I email them and meet with them and just brainstorm with them, just trying to flesh things out. And it's just good to have sounding board from time to time, you know. And that's what they do. They are there for you. So I encourage you to call these ladies, these Christian ladies, because I promise you they love the Lord and they will serve you. It's great having y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. You can be a co-creator with God by helping to echo our voices, share our episodes with friends and family and on your own social media accounts. Give us positive five-star reviews. Uh, The more positive reviews we have, the more visibility we have, and the more voices that are echoed through eternity. Uh, We often invite guests who are serving faithfully year after year, often in anonymity in their respective roles in ministries. God sees them, and and the reality is, is for a good kingdom leader, that's enough. Uh, We do not do what we do for the accolades of humanity. We do it because we're called by God. But I believe that God uses people like you and I to continue those reverberations and echo them throughout eternity. You can partner with God by liking, subscribing, writing a quick positive five-star review, and again, sharing those voices with friends and family and on your own social media accounts. Those reviews will eventually lead to other guests who have larger platforms that have more listeners who will then in turn listen to the show. And again, it further echoes those voices, which is the whole vision of the Echoes Through Eternity podcast here is to continue echoing those voices that God is echoing um, through eternity there.